I'm Glenn Garland, and this is Editors on Editing. Tatiana Regal has effortlessly jumped from television to film, editing some of the most endearing stories of the last 10 years, including PU 239, for which she won the Eddie, Lars and the Real Girl, The Way Way Back, and now Million Dollar Arm. Tatiana, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. So with PU 239, you and Leo Trembletta won the Eddie for Best feature for non-commercial televisions. It's a really powerful film. I, I it really is. enjoyed it. It is. I really love that movie, I have to say. The stories get really interesting when good people do bad things or bad people do good things. It's something that's a little unexpected. And, and this is a story of this guy, Timofey. He's a really good guy. He puts himself at risk and there's a, a leak, but then realizes that they're not going to help him or his family at all. We are placing you on indefinite leave. Pending an investigation into this alleged accident. I don't understand. A man goes into a secure chamber without authorization when the gauge reads normal and somehow a pipe ruptures. A hearing will be set for six weeks from now, at which time you will be allowed to present your version of the events. And that's when things turn and he then ends up stealing plutonium and trying to sell it on the black market. That was one of the things that really um, sort of attracted me to the story is that uh, you're rooting for this guy to do something just dreadful. Mm -hmm. Tell me about intercutting the, the two storylines between Timothy and Shiv. Was it structured exactly the way that it was written on the page? Uh, it, it was interesting because Timothy's story is much more serious and somber and quieter, and Shiv is a very Pulp Fiction-esque hoodlum character. So we kind of were going back and forth with that. We moved stuff around a lot with those two to Seemed figure like out to what was, yeah, what was going to happen when and, the right you know, balance yeah, it's not stay away from one too long and get, you know, sort of into a totally different movie and then like, oh, we have to be serious again and come back. So there was a little bit of playing around with that to, to figure that out. Yeah. Sure. One scene that was really powerful where Timothy and Shiv start talking about their children yeah. in the car. Yeah. How old is your son? Only a seven. Seven. Andre is six. He looks like me. You, you got any pictures? The moments are just held long mm -hmm. enough it's to a really get scene. the yeah. emotion. Their lives are very parallel and yet completely different. Mm -hmm. And this is a real moment of connection between the two of them. Which then explodes. You don't understand. I don't have any time to waste. The, the changing of the, the yeah. pace and the tone. Uh, yeah, and... well, I guess I love that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It was really effective to also show the fireworks mm -hmm. when he's trying to decide whether to give the plutonium mm -hmm. over. It was great. It was a great sound thing, the distance and the party and all of that Because you really kind of got stuff. the sense yeah. like, this is something I'm yeah. going to unleash on the world if I yes, exactly. go through that game. It was a nice metaphor, yeah. The narration that is intercut with the dialogue seemed like that was very tricky as Timofey is walking away. You will not make it to the train station. Everything is moving in that direction. Are you going to look for ship? Toward lead. Listen to me. Stop. Impossible to stop. Scott's narration is is almost, um, it's like another character is there. It's not expositional at all. Exactly. It's, it's emotional. It's all very emotional. I have been thinking about what hurts more. The jar or the pins. And I think I can tell you that it is not the pins. At some point, things stop hurting. And from inside the jar, with eyes that see in all directions, maybe it is possible to look into the future well beyond the pins to where the compass in your head tells you that you need to go. And it's just beautiful to listen to and you get to know the character so much by Yeah, he that. wasn't giving us information. Not at all. He was telling us something, a greater yeah, truth. exactly. Was a lot of the narration recorded on the set or was it recorded in ADR? Or was no. it improved upon in ADR? Can yeah, no, we recorded that? it a lot. We did a lot of just scratch stuff with, with Scott reading it. It did change a fair amount through the process, but you know, to me, it all just got so much more beautiful and poetic and emotional. And well, it like actually that. elevates it. Like yeah. he's talking about going towards lead. Yeah. And then it's there's beautiful, lead. It's beautiful, yeah. You know. Yeah. Lars and the Real Girl. Yes. I love that movie. 
You start with these images of Lars, these slow shots of him looking out the window at the world. Tell me about putting together that opening sequence. He's so uh, sad and melancholy, and you don't know who's coming up and seeing her and him hiding and all of that stuff. And so you very slowly start to unravel who this character, mm -hmm. and his uncomfortable, incredible uncomfortableness at the door. When we're introduced to Margot's character. Morning. There's a lot of awkward long pauses mm -hmm. between Lars and Margot because they both obviously like each other but are afraid to connect. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, we're the only ones from the lake. We could carpool. Uh, Lars, it's your day for coffee, buddy. Yeah. How do you know how long to hold different beats? I don't know if it's instinctual or you just try a little bit of a little bit of that and a little bit of playing it for audiences and seeing how they react. I wanted it to be uncomfortable, awkward. I guess I'll see you at work tomorrow. Yeah, okay, fine. Show they're both being shy and peculiar, and then, you know, confirm that with, with screenings. I think you're a lot harder on it with other people sitting in the room. Mm -hmm. You'll feel if something is too long or too short. Well, how do you keep fresh? You know, when you've been cutting for eight months and, and you're, yeah, that can you're, get hard. You're, you're sort of deciding, okay, well, it seems slow to me because well, you've Well, I think there are it. two ways. Um, one is to really remember what it felt like to you the first time you saw it, you know, when you're watching dailies. But when you have those moments that, are, that really feel genuine, those are the ones that you have to mark and make sure that you use those. When the box arrives, when Bianca arrives, yeah. you don't show her for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Was that a choice that was made in the oh, edit? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's funny, it's peculiar, it's weird, it's... It creates a lot of mystery. You keep the audience sort of wanting yeah. to know more. Mm -hmm. And then you just play it off of the brother, the brother. and sister-in-law's yeah. faces. Yes. And then you show her, which, yeah, which is works. really effective. I mean, that always got a huge reaction. You kept going to a lot of people's reactions without showing Bianca at first, mm -hmm. which I thought continued to be a comedic yes. style that was very effective throughout the movie. Yeah, it, was, it doesn't get old. I mean, it's she's a big plastic sex doll. It's bizarre, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's it's great to see everybody's reaction. Well, tell me about the difficulty of cutting an inanimate object. She's a character, but she doesn't have any facial expressions. Right. She's real to Lars, so mm -hmm. that's sort of, it was all done from his perspective. It's all done from a, of a place of reality. She loves kids. How do you know how long to hold on her? Just, that, try, just try it. You just keep trying it, yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the scenes that I thought was very tricky but handled so well was when they had the church meeting on mm -hmm. what to do with Bianca. You know, different characters have very, very different feelings about what to do. And it was a situation where we always wanted to go with what is most real and let the oddity of the subject matter speak for itself. In fact, the, f the first screening of Lars that we had, we actually felt like it, people were laughing a bit too much and, and we wanted to get kind of back to the emotion of it. That scene at the party, yeah. instead of having a lot of close-ups, you stayed with a lot of wide shots, almost as if everyone's observing her yeah. from afar. They are, and exactly. I thought it was really effective rather yes. than being so close on them. Right, well, that's that's the whole point of the scene, is what, what all of these people are thinking. You know, he wheels this doll into a party, and it's everybody else's reaction to what's happening. The uh, pace of the handshake scene, when Lars and Margot decide to hold hands for the first time, mm -hmm. you drew that out mm -hmm. to really feel that moment. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about that. I play them for my assistant first to make sure I haven't run off the tracks and hope that they're honest with me. and. Uh, and then eventually show them to the director. So tell me about relying on your assistant. You're by yourself in there in that little room and hoping that you're interpreting everything correctly. And I want to make sure that it's all believable and realistic and that it's making sense. So I like, I really like having sounding boards. And I think a lot of that, what an editor does is, is that for a director as well. Mm -hmm. It's their film. I will always do ultimately what they want. I'm not going to fall on a sword or get uh, emotional or possessive or anything like that. But, you know, I, I have opinions and I'm going to voice them and well, seeing they're pushing. you're not the director exactly. if you're not Yeah, so you, you, have, know, to, you have to be able to do that. When Bianca starts to die, hmm. it felt very real. They yeah. call 911, they don't yes. let him into the ER, yeah. they get very emotional about her journey. Did you ever feel like you were going too far with that stuff? 
No, because I believed it. You know, when I was watching dailies, I totally believed it. You actually never show Lars being intimate with the doll, except no. when she's about to die and he kisses her. Mm -hmm. You treated it like a real kiss. It was to him. So Fright Night. Yes. Very different. Little bit. Had you uh, done a lot of action and horror? I did a horror film a long, long time ago. Uh, that's about it. And I, I just liked it because I liked the humor in it. Jeez, I feel stupid. It's a cardboard cutout. It's, it's a tricky thing yes. to be scary and funny. It is. It is. The horror genre is about Mr. X. Ah! You always want to keep the audience on their toes mm -hmm. about what's going to happen. And Mr. X are a great way to keep them paying attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a ton of tension when Jerry asks for the six pack and he can't enter the house. Oh, shit. Can I help you with that? No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I, I got it. I just, uh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> Sorry, it's not a sixer. You have to have those moments to allow the tension to build. The dance, yeah. Yeah, it, it yeah. felt like you weren't afraid to let things play out yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the beers. I think we actually went back a few times and added more to it. Um, it was one of those things, that we, it's a long scene. Um, and it was one of those things where it's like, well, should we tighten this up and you know each time we did that we always were like yeah it was better before let's you know let it go Not again stretch. yeah there's that scene where charlie's fighting ed and amy's fighting yeah tell me about cross cutting between those and knowing how long to stay there was a lot of footage yeah and a lot of going back and forth and the whole the, again it's sort of a a dance to keep to keep the energy and the suspense and everything going the whole time sure it's a, it's a lot of trial and error the Way, Way Back, that's another fantastic film. The opening, you mostly show Carell in the rear view mirror. Yes. Were there shots that were shot on his face? Yeah, and I had cut originally um, a version with everything. And then I also did a version mostly just with the rear view mirror. And it is menacing. I think it, I think it works well because we all know Steve Carell not, not being at all like his character in that sure. movie. I think if you just saw yes. his face, you'd go, oh, he's that guy he's who seen, I, yeah, I think is funny. funny. Guy. Yeah. But seeing just his eyes, mm -hmm. it made him more menacing. On a scale of one to 10, what do you think you are? I don't know. What, what don't you know? How you see yourself? I think you're a three. A brutal scene. You chose also not to show uh, Duncan's mom in the car till the very end. Yes. The geography, that the space between those characters in the car is, is pretty important. She's sleeping the whole time. She's and sleeping that's, the whole time. That's the thing, is that nobody is there to protect him. And then we cut right to... Hootie hoo! Oh, you're kidding me. Thank God! Another night of drinking alone, I was gonna kill myself. Alice and Janney doing her, her shtick. And she was just amazing in every single take. It just, it like cut together like butter, that mm. scene. It was just fantastic. Tell me about the difficulties of having a character like Duncan, who's depressed, but he's sort of our hero and we have to follow him, and making sure that there's enough energy and lightness and fun when he's in a very bad place. Yeah, well, a lot of that, I think you have to depend on the, the people around him and you know maybe leave him for a little bit so, it's, it, so it doesn't get so melancholy which was easy to do because all of the other characters were just the opposite of that. When Duncan has this sort of low energy and then Rockwell has high energy. Exactly, yes. It helps balance it out a little bit. Yeah, the energy of, of the two characters playing against each other really works. He got more frenetic around Duncan um, because of that, sure. you know, and it, it, it's a nice um, juxtaposition of those two, mm -hmm. yeah. That scene with him speaking to Susanna on the porch mm -hmm. just was so uncomfortable. Sucks here, huh? It's okay. It sucks. 
No, totally. It blows so much. It's tough, yeah. All right. And again, it's it's about those pauses and just letting the awkwardness and, and the tension of that play as long as you can. Sure. One thing I haven't seen you do a lot of, but you did it a little bit in this film, was some jump cuts. Here I go. It's the energy of exploring and, and finally sort of being himself a little bit to the best that he possibly can. You know, part of it was a coverage thing. They didn't have a ton of coverage and just trying to find the right music and energy. And it, I think it, it wonderfully worked with what was happening to the character at the moment. When the boys decide that they're going to try to all slide down the slide together, might have been just because of coverage, but there's all this buildup. You go through the slide, you don't show them inside the tube, you sort of withhold that information and you just hear the screaming in the tube. So that was all built. There was no coverage of that. And in fact, I asked them to go back and just shoot the, from outside of the pipe, just you know where, the, where they would be in the pipe. Mm -hmm. I was like, we have, we have them jumping in and we have them coming out. So they actually went back and um, got those shots of following it around. And then it was all sound and, and music. And then there's that really interesting scene when Carell is caught kissing the friend mm -hmm. and Duncan witnesses it. It's not like his mother Pam witnesses it, but she can see the look on his face. Exactly. Tell yeah. me about yeah, those reactions sort of the, the, and the, the power of reaction. The blocking and the geography of that scene. Duncan's right there and they both walk past him. I think it's it's a little bit of just intuition on the mother's part. You get a lot of information without any dialogue. The scene where he might kiss Susanna yeah. and instead of Cutting, all one. Yeah. it's all one. The awkwardness and the space between them, um, I just thought worked really well. Felt more really uncomfortable well. staying yeah. in that scene. Yes. Duncan. I'm sorry. And then there's that great scene with the two of them up on the slide. Yeah. It's very, very emotional. He asked me what I thought I was at a scale of one to 10. He called me a three. Listen to me. That's about him. That's all about him. That's got nothing to do with you. Yeah, how do you know? Because I know. So I really enjoyed Million Dollar Arm. I just thought it was really well cut. It was really enjoyable. The opening I thought was really interesting because it's sort of mysterious. You're like, why am I looking at these bobbleheads? And then you hear John Ham. JB talking and you then cut to him and you don't show who he's talking to. You, you're holding back mm -hmm. all this information and then you finally reveal that the speech that he's giving is not to another player that he's trying to sign but to somebody he works with. Right. I've noticed that that's something that you tend to do a lot which is you're holding back information for yes. as long as possible and then revealing things, keeping it mysterious. Yes. I guess the philosophy would be less is more keeping the audience thinking and wondering and engaged. There are times where fast, quick editing is fun and appropriate, and there are other times where you just really want to be with the character and take your time and let things play. Well, I almost felt like the cutting style and the pace was different between the LA scenes and the scenes in India. There was mm -hmm. like this, this sort of different energy. Mm -hmm. All of the India stuff was actually shot on film, and the LA stuff was shot digitally. So there was that aesthetic difference. Mm. The India stuff was much more handheld. There was stuff handheld in, in LA, but not as much, not as frenetic. Well, I noticed crazy. the montage yeah. when we arrived, which has this fantastic Indian pop song that you're yeah. cutting to. It's called Million Dollar R. We find the first Major League Baseball player from India. Like being on the road? Words cannot express. It's just bomb, bomb. Yeah. And it's just, it felt like those shots were very shaky and mm -hmm. chaotic and had this sort of rough edge to them, mm -hmm. which gave us a real feel for India. And then when we came back to LA and we had the LA montage, everything was very slick. Glossy. Very glossy. Yes. Uh, yeah. It was cut sort of more glossy. A definite choice, yeah. There's a lot of really great comedic transitions throughout. Ray tells JB, start the car. Mm -hmm. And then you cut to the salad because yes. it's like this call to action. Yes. And then you see this sort of stop. almost <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. limp piece of salad that. And that scene is particularly funny, I think. That that stop. I mean, JB is very also desperate again at that moment, and we just decided to to make the transition there, and it worked really great. Yeah, I mean, it really helps the energy. It just yes. keeps flowing, and you're just yeah. trying to keep up. Yes. Hey, how fast are they pitching cricket? I think I cracked this. Is the Britain's Got Talent? Yes. And how he discovers it by switching the channels. He started going back and forth, but then you started going back and forth without him changing the channels. Was almost sort of the way we think. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about cutting that together. That took a little while to figure that out. It's something that on the page I think um, appears to be much more simple than actually when you sit down to do it. And intercutting it with the music and score on top of that and all of those different levels. It was a really fun and, and difficult scene for something that looks so simple. It took us some time to get that. Well, I often right. feel like yeah. if it looks simple, it's a mm -hmm. lot of complexity went into it. Yeah. Well, isn't that the interesting thing about editing? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I loved the character Amit, and his introduction was really great because you didn't start with JB, you started with Amit. Tell me about how you introduced him and, and other characters. I think the the fun part of it was to try to figure out a way to get to know and love all of these characters as quickly as possible. Well, there's a lot of characters to also yes, juggle. Yes, yes, there are. Uh, and people sort of show up at different times, and even the two guys. That was another little tricky part, because originally in the script, they were introduced much earlier. And it was actually one of the first sort of structural changes that we made. You know, the audience is way ahead of, of the story. And it's like, you know, you introduce these kids and it's all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, those are the guys. Now we have to wait for JB to find them. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up pushing them much farther back. One cut that I loved was when Amit follows JB to the elevator. JB mm -hmm. gets in and rather than having JB right in the elevator, you cut right mm -hmm. to JB coming out of the elevator and Amit's right there. Yes. And so you don't let the audience get ahead. And it always gets a good chuckle. I mean, it's it, there is a jump. There's definitely a time jump, and so logically it could be a little bit of an issue, but it always gets the proper chuckle at that moment, which mm -hmm. is fun. you know. And it, and it just adds also to, to Amit's excitement. There's so many great montages throughout the movie, too. There are a lot of pitching montages, and, mm -hmm. and as fun as that is at times, it, it's sort of the same action over and over again. And so we had to sort of come up with ways to make them all slightly different beyond just music. So that each time, it's not like, oh, pitching montage again, mm -hmm. you know? I noticed that they all had a different feel to them and it made it fresh. Yes, the great thing was that we had so much coverage of everything. It, you know, we, we could have done anyone in any way. With the process, it became you know, understanding the film and understanding when you needed to do certain things in the context of the movie. Just figure out where we needed them to be a little more suspenseful, where we needed them to be a little more fun, where we needed to be a little more exploratory, whatever mm -hmm. the situation was. The emotion of the scene that you exactly. were trying to get was the basis for how exactly. you approached each Always, uh, I think scene. that's always mm -hmm. the case. Sure. Yeah. When we got to their village, it felt like the style of the editing also changed there. Yes. It was very fast and energetic, and then it slowed down, much more emotional. You even did something that I found was really interesting was when they start doing the traditional ceremonies, mm -hmm. you or the mixer or, or Craig mm -hmm. or all of you decided to take the sounds and almost sort of mute them yes. and pull them back. Yes, tight. that happened pretty early on actually. Um, realistically, you, you, you know, story-wise on paper, you could go, okay, here are two guys, let's go right back to LA you know, and do the second part of it. And we have these, you know, whatever, seven, seven or eight scenes that are all character and emotion and really understanding what's about to happen to these guys. So we sort of took this little pause. And sound-wise, it just worked really nicely there. We had some superb music in the film. Very emotional, very fun, different, you know, Indian. The music almost felt rap. like a character. Uh, yes, yes. It, like the place and the music was, was yeah. another character. Yes, well, early on, we were really, we were trying to sort of figure out logically what, what it was going to be. I mean, were we going to have Indian music in India and American music in, in the States? Or do we get to cross over? Or how do we do it? Or is it just going to be a little bit of instrumentation? Or, you know, what happens? And I have a philosophy of holding off on music for as long as possible. Music can do so much to a scene that if you put it on too soon, you're not doing the editorial part of the scene justice. And if you can really force yourself to 
do everything that you can possibly do to get a scene to play without music, then you put music on and you're, you're set, you're fine. Sure. It's just, it's f But phenomenal. you don't want to use it as a band-aid. No, once you put it in, it's very difficult to get it back out again, sure. if not impossible. And I think there are a lot of places where early in the process, you might think, oh, we're absolutely going to need music here. And if you put it there too soon, then it's there. So some of the film is done in Hindi. Was that a challenge at all yes. to be editing in a different language? Yes, I don't speak Hindi. How did you approach those scenes? Well, uh, the script was in English. Mm -hmm. um, we did have somebody come in and make sure that I hadn't done because if they, horrible damage. Because if they yes. sort of ad lib something. Exactly. Hindi is so different than, you know, if it were French or Spanish or some other language that I had an idea of, you know, maybe I could get closer. Mm -hmm. It's also very difficult because when you're editing a scene, it is about all of those little things. Every inflection of every word mm -hmm. can, can mean sure. something completely different. And, you know, you can cut things in the middle of a sentence, sometimes in the middle of a syllable, you know, and make a change. I watched all of the dailies and I just tried to understand. It was it became more of a musical thing, just listening to it and trying to sort of the rhythms. more or less guess. But it's time consuming because, you know, if, you, if you're jumping around in a take, you know, if it's in the language that you speak, it's like, oh, there we are in the scene. If it's sure. not, you have to get a big run up and try to figure out where you are at that point. So I used a lot of locators and then basically sort of did it more of from a musical standpoint, then brought a translator in and make sure I, I didn't do anything horrible. A scene that I felt was very effective also was when the television is basically saying, you know, these boys don't have a future and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And you sort of pull out the sound rather than keep it going. You start playing it almost as if it's sort of like in their head, like it's echoing in their yeah. head. Did you also do that to the television set, yeah. or was that something that no, was no, no, we did that. We did that pretty early on as well. Mm -hmm. Most of those things, Craig and I played around with. There was a cut that I thought was really effective, which was there's a pitch and it, we go to black. Yeah. And because we went to black and things aren't answered. It, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Tell me about. Uh, well, that was something that we we played around with for a while. There's a whole uh, there's a whole other scene in the script that was shot that comes after that. It was originally a very you know freeze frame kind of moment. He jumps in the air, and the last scene was something that we were never really happy with, which has sort of had this idea of like let's just boom, just cut to black. And then we had this fantastic footage of the real house and Rinku and Dinesh. It was incredibly powerful to cut out to black there without sort of showing the end of the scene and then going to the real guys where you finally get to see these these real kids. Exactly, and not house. letting the audience yes. get ahead of the exactly. film. Exactly. You want to keep people engaged. You don't want to ever leave them behind. Audiences are very clever, so they tend to get ahead of you a lot, so you have to make sure not to let that happen. Mm -hmm. And you can keep them guessing and not, not too little, not too much, but then also coming into scenes and out of scenes where you can keep everybody on their toes a bit. And I, I really like that ending. I think it's a very powerful it's ending. It's very powerful. Yeah. Tatiana, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. You can beat the world, you can win the war. You can talk the guy, go banging on his door.